Okay, let's start with creating some operations. So I will start with the roughing waterline operation, which is located in the 3D entry group of the operations. So I push this new operation uh, drop down, or I can use new operation window. Okay, so I will use roughing waterline operation from the 3D entry. Okay. So first I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust some parameters of the operation in order for my toolpath to become more uh, similar to the final result I want to obtain. Okay, first I will adjust the tool. Uh, okay, I have 50 millimeter tool by default, some tool which is Sprutcam has chosen from the library. I'm going to use a 30 millimeter tool, so I will define it like this. So double click on the tool and just change the diameter. Okay, if you don't have this properties window, just push this button and it will show up. And press this apply changes, don't forget it. Okay, fine, I have 30 millimeter tool now. Okay, please also make sure that you have tool length 130. Okay, next is the orientation of the tool corresponding to the 3D model. Okay, so we have a lot of options because because we have six axis uh, robot and two axis positioner. So we have in total eight axis of the equipment we are programming right now, which is ob oh, honestly speaking is quite a big challenge itself. But with Sprutcam, I believe it will be very easy for you and you will understand the principles. Once you understand the principles, you will be able to explore Sprutcam yourself and make your own projects. Okay, and this is the purpose of this particular lesson to make you to help you to understand to help you to understand the principles. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to define the orientation of the tool corresponding to the 3D model. So by default, it is from the Z axis, which is not what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to the setup tab here and push this rotary axis option okay choose this option and here i have click to pick option and i will use my x axis direction okay you can see that the tool is now approaching the part from the positive direction of the x axis but i can also use like some other custom vector with a view vector option okay if i choose the position of my view like this with a middle mouse button and p push view vector option you can see that my tool is oriented the same way as i have it as it was oriented with x axis direction okay next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to the job assignment and define the limitation i have here the limitation is the restriction zone so here at the bottom you will see it like this here at the bottom you have restrictions in the job assignment i will choose faces and this uh, design which i have in restrictions folder like this okay now my toolpath is will not will not uh, cross this area which is good which is i want to obtain and the last but not the least is another uh, another tool in Sprutcam which we have for handling the redundant kinematics. This one is for definition of how the tool is approaching or how the tool is oriented corresponding to the rotary table. Because one more time we have eight axes for the tool uh, for the tool path we need only five of them so we need to define three more axes uh independent of the tool path okay it's hard to understand maybe but if you uh if you have some experience with robot programming you know that uh, it's the necessity okay and in sprutcam we have all the tools for it okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to choose the rotary table vector as soon as I select this option in the setup tab in the operation, okay, I can see this vector. This is the vector which will be used to define from which side will the tool approach the rotary table. And I will also turn on the rotary table. So in this particular case, I have access E4. Let's check. 
Yes, this is the axis I'm going to use. So I want my E4 to participate in the tool uh, in the toolpath generation. As you can see, as soon as I have turned it on, the robot and the rotary table has moved to the position. Okay, this is the position which will be used for toolpath calculation. So my tool is approaching the rotary table from the positive direction of the x-axis. It is defined here. The tool is the is oriented uh, along x-axis of the uh, 3D model, like this. So this is the correct position. The last thing I'm going to do before I make some two-path calculation, finally, is I'm going to adjust the levels, because by default, SpritCam will try to machine all the parts. I'm, I don't need this. I have the tool length 130. So maybe I will go, let's say, 114 from here, minus 130, minus 16. So this is the level which will be possible uh, if I have if I use the tool for the for the full length. Okay. Let's uh, let's try let's run and see how it works. Okay, the toolpath is calculated. Uh, okay, I can see that the most probably we have a problem with approach here. Let's check, by the way. I'm switching to the simulation. Okay, you can see, guys, that robot programming is something different from CNC machines programming. It's much more challenging, but we have all the tools to make it very nice in SpritCam. Okay, if I press run, I can see that, oh, I have a problem here with the... Uh, uh, with the collision at the at the approach and Sprutcam is showing me it says man you have a problem here in this movement absolutely no problem we are ready for this so I'm going back to sim machining and here I have links tab and I will choose the approach rule which I have prepared specially for the statue which is called approach for statue machining it's different rule okay and uh, if I apply it, okay, it will be without any collisions now. Let's check. Yes, so first the rotation. And then approach. Nice. Okay, let's increase the speed to simulate. Okay, looks we have one more problem at return. Let's see what we have. Yes, we can see that there's the same problem with return. Let's check our return rule for the statue, which we have here. Recalculate the toolpath. Okay, I will mm, save my time, simulate the operation, go to return and check what I have now instead of what I had before. Yes, now I have much better return rule for the this operation to finish. Okay, very nice. So what we have done is that we have done the machining of the our the first machining of the um, of our statue, the roughing one. Uh, so now let's make some it more like um, give it final look. Okay, first I will make some uh, adjustments for the stock, okay? So I don't want my uh, roughing operation to cut until the contact with the part, with the model. Okay, so I will make 5 millimeters stock, axle and radial stock. Okay, and uh, one more thing I want to do is I want to make it look more like semi-finished. Okay, and let's let's first see. Yes, okay. Let's turn on the machine. Yes, we have turned. Uh, we have our uh, machining result visibility here. So I don't want these steps to be so big. I want it, them to be uh, smaller. That's why I will use an option which is called step up uh, in the roughing waterline operation. Here it is step up. I will use default one. 
recalculate toolpath it will take a little more time so that's why, why my advice to you is to try to keep things simple first then you can complicate and make your parameters tighter tighten up your parameters but first you make basic calculation okay so very nice the toolpath is good the, i have no collisions uh, so our finishing operation is uh, sorry our roughing operation number one is finished we will have another one in the next video so let's check the simulation and go to the next video Very nice.